Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome back to the stream. I'm hoping I can get back running the um the game itself. I'm hoping. It should work. Not running. Why isn't it not working? Up to you. Maybe. Okay, so that's the application. Run as administrator. Yes. Okay, hopefully that will fix the issue. It should be alive. Um, I'm going to try run the application. I mean, I'm trying to fix the issue myself. But it's just not wanting to run. I'd never experienced such an issue. Um, I'm just thinking of running it on administrator, but if not, I'll uninstall and reinstall quickly. Shouldn't shouldn't take me too long because the game honestly was quite quick. Yeah, let's uninstall it and reinstall completely. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. By the way, welcome back to the stream. It's appreciated. So, Churi, uh. Where are you from? You there? <laughs> Is anyone available in the chat? Can you see this? Can you see me? Well, hopefully people are there, and you guys are ready to watch a decent game. I mean, I have to re-download a lot of my games. Since I bought my new computer, a lot of these games are, like, on pending. Okay, downloaded. I'm going to check something online. Because this game needs to work. I don't understand why it's not working. Let's see. Um, broken sword one. See if we can find something online.
Oh, okay. So there's been people who've experienced issues with this. And they they say that I just need to go to where the file is located. Which we can we can locate it, that's no problem. So let's just browse. Okay. And then it says here Problem is that razor, okay. Not does not open AL. Open AL DL was not found, okay. And that's what it said. To install it you need to open the folder with the game files and run and run the actual thing. Let's see if we can find this. O A L I N S T dot EXT. Yes, it's all complete. Let's see if this works now. Ta da! We're gonna put this in full screen though. I got it to work! Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Alright, let's go play some Broken Sword. Paris. City of love, romance and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day, the day of the murder, I have always associated my beloved Paris with death. I love this game. And it's so well, like, the music is so thought out. Everything. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royale now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes. But unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was. The palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes? What is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up. We're on the first floor. Madame Cochon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty. You're too kind, madame. Ah, 
the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carson? Oh dear. He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer, at least that's what I'd called him. It was one of my hair clips. My favorite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. Jesus. In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. Carchon had been shot. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. I didn't want to cut myself and leave blood on the glass. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to keep my DNA to myself. <laughs> the killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder and I needed to find them. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. What she said. Aha! Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French Ultramarine. 
just the color I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favorite color. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. Excuse me, madame. Yes? I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Collard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronise me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes, that's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband... Then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already, I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. You know, at least you can see that there's some sort of heart from this character. Whether she's just lost her husband. I don't know if she had much emotion, you could say. But still there is some... There is something there. You know? Now we were getting somewhere. The painting showed the cachons together, in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? There was the very faintest of clicks. Behind the picture was a safe. Hmm. Sure, we can use the key. In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But wow. these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact, and Carchon was past carrying.
As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique, yawn. The blotter and entry had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin, carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. The blotter was flat already. Rolling the cylinder across it would achieve nothing. Putting the paint straight on the cylinder would... The paint would... I smeared the paint all over the cloth. I hoped this was going to help. They what don't do make kidding? lace like that anymore. Sorry, just the cat is asking for my complete and utter attention. What do you want, kitty? Look at him. Look at him. He's a baby. In case people are wondering, this is Kupo, my little baby. He acts like a little baby. He's a little, he's a little chub chub. In case people like cats or they don't, <laughs> he's a little sphinx. This is what I call a little baby. And if you don't give him the attention, he'll he'll cry a lot. So it's okay, my love. It's okay. Mm. Right, no worries. I wiped the paint covered cloth over the surface of the stone cylinder. It took me right back to art class at school. And Maurice, my gorgeous art teacher. Such a shame they had to fire him. Ah, well. Concentrate, Nico, concentrate. Genius. The roller and the paint worked just as I planned, but what did it say? Subjudice. It was some kind of coded message. It read, Subjudice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité by the river housed the ancient law courts. So, subjudice could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the Conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. Someone who's very determined for her job. Are you watching the stream at the moment, uh, Churi? Oh, hopefully. Hopefully you are. Did you find anything useful? This carving? Do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with... Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more? No. But I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask... Don't worry. You are never here. Subjudice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. 
I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. Canchon wasn't the type for messing about on the river. He was up to something down here. Something that got him killed. I wasn't leaving yet. The cross looked familiar. I'd seen it before. It was embroidered on the lace cloth I'd picked up at Carchon's apartment. I knew I was on the right track. I tried pushing the fence, but it wouldn't move. A strange pair of locks stopped the latches from releasing the gate. One down, one to go. Decent.
I need to try and get that there. This one needs to be moved. That's the impression I'm getting. <laughs> Nothing like a good convent education for honing your lockpicking skills. For a room full of junk, that was one very sophisticated lock system. This place was definitely fishy. In more ways than one. An old shell case. I wondered what that was doing there. I mean, it does look like a really, really dodgy place to, to have a, you know. You'd have such an amazing looking lock and then, you know, just randomly. I mean, it just seems very set up, I'm not going to lie. Mystery solved. Carchon's stone cylinder slotted into the hole with a satisfying click. The words sinister and dexter were carved on either side. Now any good convent girl like me knows the old Roman for left, right, left, right. But what did it mean here? Rolling out the painted cylinder, had given me a print of a secret message. It read, Subjudice. Below it was a sequence of letters. S, D, S, S, D, S, S. S. A sec. D. Another. S. S. D. S. Yes. I love the sound of locks clicking open. Oh, got it right. <laughs> the reason for it is because, in case people are thinking, how is he figuring that out? Within, it she does specify here the where the message is at the top. Of a you it do read, see 
S D S S D S S. And as you're looking at the little circle thing, there's an S and there's a D. So in case you get lost, you know where to look. The cross looked familiar. I'd seen it before. Oh my god, the slab came down. With nothing to hold it up, the lifting the cross close. I mean, surely you need something thin for that. So. I wasn't wrong. The stone slab had flattened one end of the shell case. Wait. Can that be taken? I removed the stone. Okay, at least it doesn't close. I think that's going to be important. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. The stone cross was propped up. Now I was getting somewhere. The artifact slotted into the hole perfectly. Behind the old walls, I could hear some kind of mechanism groaning into life, but whatever had been triggered had now jammed. I removed the crust. The gap was too thin for me to get a grip. I needed something thin enough to prise the door open. Another good use for a shell case. Another secret room. Somebody had something to hide. But was it what I was looking for? Wow! Through the darkness, I could see that this was a stateroom. But for what purpose? And how did it tie in with Carchon? Was a red light at the start of the entrance? Amazing! The thing still worked. The room lit up bright as day. It was pretty clear from the lack of dust that someone had been working very recently at this desk. Oh my god! The sheet was a printout with my personal information. 
everything from my favorite food to my waist size. They were right about chocolate. But come on, guys. I'm a size 10. There was even a picture of me taken with a telephoto lens. Carchon wouldn't have taken these pictures himself. This was big. And organized. I was part of it. And people were getting murdered. One thing was clear. Someone connected to Carchon had been watching me. This was the article I'd written about the costume killer. My suspicions were right. Carchon had cut it out. Two businessmen had been killed. One in Italy, one in Japan. In each case, the killer had worn a costume, a penguin, and then a snowman. But that wasn't the only link between the two murders. Both the victims had been big media do-gooders, and I proved they were just the opposite. So, how did they fit in with Carchon? My articles about The dregs at the bottom of the mug hadn't dried out or gone moldy. It wasn't more than a day old. Inside the drawer, I found a note written in some kind of code. Don't you just hate it when that happens? A photo, long lost, had fallen down the back of the drawer. It was very old, but there was no mistaking the guy in the foreground. Carchon. Behind him were soldiers, a burning village and a corpse. The photograph was cropped on the right-hand side. Somebody else in the picture obviously didn't want to be in it anymore. I wasn't surprised. This was Africa in the 60s. An uprising was being brutally suppressed. And here was Mr. Media himself, Carchon, doing the suppressing. The photograph was not just powerful evidence. It was also my ticket to one explosive story. There was nothing else. The flags had faded, but their message was still pretty clear. Fascist regalia, a message of hate. I wasn't going to find anything in this old desk. It hadn't been used for years. A door like that always has something important behind it. I had to find a way to unlock it. That wasn't going to... The cross did A slot next to the safe door. It was like being back in kindergarten.
The draw had come out. I need that cylinder. But if we leave that there, surely that will keep the door open. That's not what I need to do. And give it there's a <clears throat> So let's have a bit of common sense. It's a letter given to someone. In this case this isn't meant to be a letter to Pierre. No, I would think. So, if I was to think that this is to Pierre, you'd start your name P I E double R E. We'll try. Okay, so we're starting to see some words here. That could be care. Report. So, O. T being that weird symbol. T O G to get G. H being that N squiggly. That word there uh, looks like that. Uh, okay. Take from here. Care. That symbol. Who? Pierre? Follow. Full. But both, yeah, okay, that's definitely not this urgent and Arno and. Yeah, full report to follow, but this is too urgent to wait. Arno and Ada, both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it...
I'm just gonna guess a letter. Seems that all of us who came together came. July? Why? Okay. I have decrypted the note. It read, Pierre. Full report to follow. But this is too urgent to wait. Arno and Yamada both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in July are in danger. Take great care. X. I wasn't the only one to make the connection between the costume killer murders. I'd been right all along. That was why he had asked to meet me. But what did I know that he didn't? I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to make my reputation and blow Conchance to pieces. I needed to get home fast and start typing. Bonsoir, Coulard. Nico, it's Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne yet? Are you crazy? What's wrong? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. That's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. It's suicidal. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie, two hours ago I told you what I'd found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in newspapers, Nico. Someone's got to you, haven't they? Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. Pierre Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends, for your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. End of conversation. Good night. This should have been my big break, but I knew there was nowhere else to sell this story. Seems plain, if Ronnie wouldn't very print it, planned. nobody would. Bonsoir, Collard. Mademoiselle Collard, my name is Plantard. I need to talk to you about your story, your Pierre Carchon story. How did you know about that? There are people out there, madame, who will be very upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. We must? I have information relating to your costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Café de la Chandelle Verte. Rue Alain Cour. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at eight. I'll be waiting. People complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. I'd only been in Paris for a week, but already I'd fallen in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted.
As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the next minute some clowns blown me up. I knew right away what I was going to do. I was going to find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty and equality and uh, fraternity. After all, that's why I'd studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and... I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read, Salah Eddin, 1345. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. The sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I hoped the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. The mirror had smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. He was pretty mashed up. He was pretty... A mysteriously undamaged bottle of spirit stood on the bar. I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. The waitress was clearly suffering from shock. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Should I offer a person alcohol? They've just been in shock. Don't do this at home. I'm looking at all of you. Don't do it at home. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. Ah, that's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. Hey! Wake up! She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. Please! Hold it right there! Oh, don't shoot! I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Marche. 
What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll live if she survives the hangover. She doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd, don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe, I wonder? Right. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, uh, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nicole Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Plantard. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? He's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. How did Plantard get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. 
the cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantard said he could supply me with more information. Well, somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Look, the inspector gave me his card. I didn't know his first name was Augustin. It suits him, I must say. I found this newspaper outside the cafe. That is not a newspaper, it's a gossip rag. It may have belonged to Plantar. So? He had a taste for sensationally smut with right-wing bias. That doesn't tell us much. There's something written in it. Salah Eddin, 1345. It sounds like a betting tip. The name of the horse and the time of the race. What do you think? That's what I thought, but the name of the meeting isn't given. Well, so what? I'm not the least bit interested in horse racing, are you? No, but it could be a clue to the killer's next move. Do you think his next victim will be the jockey? Or the horse? She looked at me with a playful twinkle in her eye. Okay, it's a long shot. Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, uh, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on time with you. Uh, fine, uh, I'll see you soon. Start of the. No, actually. Cafe. Alright, well, because it's already 2 in the morning, uh, I'm going to leave the story here for this evening. Um, I will be able to continue this tomorrow, if you'd like, if people are happy with um, with continuing to watch Broken Sword. Uh, I'll also be uploading this on YouTube, so at least we can keep having like a Let's Play aspect of the game. Um, but honestly, thank you very much for anyone that's been joining today. Um, only you guys can make this a reality for me. Um, you know, keep the follow cap, you know, happening. Subscribe, please, and just the usual. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for, for being a part of this journey. So, good night, everyone, and, you know, good night.